You probably often ask the same set of questions, and then inevitably someone misses the most important one. Hopefully, forms can help you uh, combat that because you can make those questions required. Let's go to your form builder under workspace settings. In your form builder, you can use this for a ton of things. If you have a questionnaire, if you want to use your discovery form here, or if you want to uh, request reviews, you can do all of those things using forms and tons more. Anything that you would use a Google form for or your type form, Moxie has you covered. You'll use all of these widgets by clicking and dragging them into the form. And then you'll click on that to edit it. So you can add in uh, your uh, your text here. You can make it required. Uh, depending on the question, you'll have different options here. But you will want to make sure that you use these field reporting, these reporting field names, and your mapping. So uh, you want to make sure this is clear and not clever. So this is only going to be seen by you. Your reporting field name. So make sure you give that a name that is going to tell you exactly what that question is about. This is going to come in handy when you use that in your workflow automations. Same for your mapping. Um, you can map something to uh, specific things within Moxie. That is going to make this easier for you to use when it comes to your templates and also in your workflow automations. So that is uh, how you will create that. Let's take a look at some that are already mapped. So here you can see this, I would like their first name. I'm going to call this field first name and I'm going to map it to the first name here as well. In these questions, this is my budget question. So I have named the reporting field name is budget. And then this is uh, due to is about length. And so I'm going to call this question length. Um, from here, you can add in, uh, you can make questions required, uh, you can add in images if you like, uh, make this look uh, exactly how you want. Uh, you can change the style uh, by uh, adding in different colors here as well, make it very styled or very simple depending on what you would like it to look like. In your settings, you can also add a confirmation email template. That means every single person who fills out this form will receive this uh, email from you. Uh, you can create those in your templates, and uh, that's also in your workspace settings. And you can also drop this into your pipeline. Again, this is going to come into play when you are using your workflow automations. So for the purposes of this specific form, this is going to be my discovery form. So I'm going to put this submission into my inquiry. Uh, you can uh, opt to do this or it doesn't have to get dropped into your pipeline. Let's say it is uh, just a survey that you're sending out. You probably don't need to put these submissions into your pipeline. You can redirect after submit and you or you can also use uh, this. Uh, re your response has been submitted as well. So as soon as they hit submit, uh, the text will switch here to whatever you type here. You'll be able to share this either by embedding it directly on your website or a direct link. So if you want to uh, include this in your email newsletter, you can easily do that as well. That's creating your forms. There are tons of uses for your forms. One of the best ones is here within your meeting scheduler. So you can create a scheduler. This is a uh, essentially to help you say, here's my link, you schedule at a time that is convenient for you. You're going to connect this to your calendar. And another way we make this convenient is allowing you to add in your forms here as well. So you use this drop down and you can add in a form here as well. So before someone can schedule a meeting with you, they also have to answer all of these questions. So I have created this special form for this meeting uh, to try to get as much information before the meeting happens. Another place where you can use your forms is within your client portal. If you want to allow your clients to uh, submit requests and tickets, you can do that. Um, you manage that within your communicator as it's something you're going to communicate with your clients. Uh, you can add in a request type. So again, that's going to be uh, clear and uh, not clever. And you'll add in a status list. So this status list is 
uh, also uh, for you and your client to say, this is a new uh, request type. This one needs assistance. This one is complete. Create those statuses as you would like. And then you'll use a form here. So when your client does go to submit this ticket, they will complete this form uh, and before they can send it to you. So you would use this if your client is uh, maybe you do some some web things for them. And when they need something to be updated, they need to fill out this specific form and they can find this in their client portal where they'll click on requests in their client portal and be able to fill out this form. Uh, so you get exactly the information that you want. There are lots and lots of ways that you can use forms. Um, I'll show you quickly a, a brief overview of how this will work in your workflow automations. So in the form that I just built here, my discovery form, uh, I am going to put this into my inquiry. So anytime that someone fills out this form, it's going to drop into the inquiry section of my pipeline. So here are some that have filled that form out. And uh, here's how I can see that. So it has dropped in here into my inquiry. I can see here's the lead information that they entered and I can also look in activity and see here is their full the full information and the form that they filled out I can also view the form itself from here I can create a client uh, it's just gonna make everything really easy uh, since I've gotten that form created I can also use that in workflow automation so that form comes in it gets dropped into the inquiry stage and then I have set up my workflow automation that when an opportunity ends enters that inquiry stage, this specific workflow is going to run. So that's the start and it's going to go ask this budget question. So this is a decision question similar to when you built the form. When you build your workflow automation, you can use these widgets and you'll click and drag them onto the field to be able to use them. So I clicked and dragged this uh, and that's what this is this is a decision question. So I'm going to use uh, I'm going to call this my budget decision. Um, from my form answers, if you recall, I named that field ID budget. And so I'm going to say my field ID is budget. It is. And if they choose the greater than $1,000 option, that fits within my budget. And also, I want to make sure that I only work with clients who are ongoing. So this is going to qualify that lead. So using my form answer and that field ID and the answer that I have written there, um, I can also change this to be and or or. So I want both of these things to be true. But if you only want one of these things to be true, you could choose the or operator here. So now this is qualified my leads based on the answers in the form. I haven't even needed to look at the form or the answers because this is going to qualify the lead for me. So if both of those things are true, I want to set up a meeting with those folks. So what I'm going to do is click and drag a send email. That's what this box is. It's a send email uh, uh, widget. Uh, I just won't make you watch me create the whole thing. Uh, I'll drop down to say that it's from me. I'll use the form email. Again, I had labeled and mapped that to form email when I created my form. So now it's going to pull that email address directly from my form without me having to look at it. I'm going to use an email template. Uh, if you have questions about templates, you can always find that using the question mark and our help center. Uh, that's going to pull up this email template, which is going to create a, a send them a meeting schedule scheduler link so that we can chat about this project. If, however, they don't meet my criteria, I'm going to click and drag this send email and I'm going to send them this no thank you template that we're not quite the right fit, but thank you so much. And now my qualified leads they are going to receive an, a meeting email and my other leads that I know aren't going to be quite the right fit for me at this time are automatically going to get a not right now kind of email. And that's how starting at a form, you can use your sales pipeline and your workflow automations to put your discovery process basically on automate once you get everything set up. Think of your forms as anything that you need to get answered. You can probably create a form for that.